Hello, hello. Okay, here we go. So just to preface, you probably won't agree with everything I'm saying, so let me know down below. So the killer. Fassbender plays a nameless, largely silent protagonist, an immoral assassin, jet-setting around the world, traveling through these non-places incognito under a baseball cap, unquestionably cool. He botches an assassination in Paris, causing a cascade of <laughs> meaning his boss has to tie up loose ends. And the film is about our protagonist's subsequent retribution to this. Fight Club coming through heavy in this opening credit sequence. Close-up shots doctored to look oversaturated and, and highlights blown out. So what I like about the film, it's technically perfect. Each shot is done to pinch your perfection. It feels like the kind of film James Bond should be. Even Fassbender would be a classic choice for James Bond, and films like this prove it. I also noticed Fassbender looks a little bit like Heisenberg when he's clean shaven and the dark shades on. There's also a lot of time spent with monologues, which is very Bond, such as Tilda Swinton in the restaurant making a, a sort of ceremony of an imminent death with, with panache and flights of whiskey. You know, Tilda Swinton could be a great M replacement. I love her. She's such an elite cold b and perfect as a former assassin in this film. And also the sound design and music, like the Smiths on his earphones as he's, as he's lining up that shot at the beginning. And that haunting sort of tremolo effect on the guitar from How Soon Is Now by the Smiths. Settings are also treated like Bond movies. They're plentiful, they're, they're, they're glorified to make the protagonist look cool and elite. And I'm a settings guy, right? I prioritize that over most of the things in films, including the backstory, which we'll get to later. The minimal decor of his Dominican home with bean bags and shisha on the floor and earthy cubist uh, artwork and linen curtains rippling in the, in the tropical wind I love this setting. And as he enters, Glory Box starts playing by Porter's Head, which is fucking brilliant. The town Porter's Head is actually 20 minutes from here. And the fight scenes were good. Maybe a homage to, to Kill Bill Volume 1 when the bride kills Vanita Green with a with a fire poker. Honestly, I'd opt for more violence. Fincher does it so well. So what I don't like. So the impossible shit, right? Fastbender breaking into his boss's office as a recycling guy. Seems a bit cheap and a bit sloppy. Marker penning the recycling emblem to put on his green sort of overalls. Uses cheap tools purchased on Amazon to break into a billionaire's home. Is that really plausible? And if it's meant to be implausible or ironic, make a statement out of that. But the film doesn't do that. And the VO, the VO man. It's a dog eat dog world to reuse the apt cliche. How many platitudes can you squeeze in an opening scene? He's so laconic in real life, but yet he has this rich internal philosophical monologue, which could be interesting, I guess, sort of the disconnect between the uh, between his mind and reality. Unlike a film such as The Mechanic, which comes to mind, which features a 16 long minute sequence where Charles Bronson prepares to snipe at someone from across the street, a very similar scene to the beginning of The Killer. But throughout that time, he says or he thinks absolutely nothing, just silence, just action. And I like when things are silent in films. Andrew Kevin Walker, writer of this film, is clearly scribbling down voiceover for, for our protagonist, making him justify his actions over and over again in an immoral framework, which works to an extent, but you know, I have my preferences. Also, as a complete aside in that opening scene, why would anyone want to be so ostentatiously rich, just make yourself a target immediately. Keep a low profile, you idiot. So criticism has been leveled at the film for not kind of establishing his home life enough, maybe with like, the use of flashbacks or something. But I quite like the linearity and the real time nature of the film, which is a lot more a la mode now than back in like the Fight Club era, where things would crash back and forth through the chronology. Critics also mention there's a disconnect between his, his clear amorality and him having empathy with his girlfriend. He's obviously taking all this risk and going through all this effort to make things right, should we say but he might not have any feelings for her. It could just be a cold sense of duty that he does this. I mean, there's nothing to suggest this through most of his actions in the film. No sort of text messages, no voiceover segments, sort of describing his feelings towards her, of which there's plenty for other shit, or any sort of indications of affection. But my thoughts on this. Honestly, I don't need to know about his girlfriend or his love life. Just following this hitman around doing shit, going about his routine is enough for me. I mean, the girlfriend could literally just be a placeholder for anyone. He's a psychopathic killer. He probably won't hang on to her that long anyway. So ultimately, I just like watching this guy going about his shit in such a clean, orderly fashion, discarding his moped helmet in the river, uh, shaving in a, in a sort of kiosk WC, going back and forth between storage units. Fassbender carries it so well, and he brings this reptilian psychopathy to the role, his physicality and coldness. I could watch this guy for 10 hours, just going about his job efficiently, cleanly, and it ends with the simplest things, a nice lemon garnish on the edge of a coffee mug, and reclining near a serene Caribbean lake. Go watch. So obviously you might not agree with everything I said, but how do I know if you don't tell me? Put your comments down there. Let me know shit. Uh, take me down a level. Thank you for watching.